Uh, curious, are, is there a lot of outrage in right wing media about this? Because, <laughs> as far as I know, they don't like workers When doing sick strike, outs. Yeah. So. Last Week in Southern Labor is a segment that we do every week where we talk about what happened last week in Southern Labor. We take it from the newsletter, Who Gets the Bird? You can read it, whogetsthebird.substack.com, written by Jonah Furman, where he compiles everything that happened in the labor movement in the United States of America. We pull the things that happened from the South because that is the most important. And we all know that, folks. We all know that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. In new organizing, 346 more Starbucks workers at 13 more stores, including in Austin, Texas, Oviedo, and Estero, Florida, and Anderson, South Carolina, are joining Workers United uh, in the wave that just won't quit, which brings us to a total of over 3,300 workers who filed for elections, not counting those who've announced their intention to do so but haven't yet put in the paperwork. 40% of that just in the last four weeks. Really amazing stuff. Uh, 90 workers at Diversified Gas and Oil in Buchanan, West Virginia, are unionizing with the steel workers, and 10 freight drivers and warehouse workers for Point Dedicated Services in Laredo, Texas, are joining Teamsters Local 6. 57. In election wins, we had 20 rail workers for Bombardier in Sanford, Florida, voting 13 to 4 to join the Brotherhood of Railroad Signalmen. And Starbucks workers in Knoxville, Tennessee, become the first Starbucks location in the South to win an election. How about that? Yes, how about that? You can watch our interview with a barista from that location on our YouTube channel. We talked to Maggie Carter. She is a barista at the Knoxville Starbucks location about uh, about herself and about her Uh, about the union campaign at her location. So if you want to learn more about what's going on in Knoxville, we talked to them when they were still the only Starbucks location in the South to have filed. So um, get, get an idea for what's going on there. In strikes and bargaining, the CWA call centers for Maximus, which handles federal hotlines for Medicare and ACA inquiries, struck last week in Hattiesburg, Mississippi and Bogalusa, Louisiana, on the 12th anniversary of the passage of Obamacare. This is a big one. Uh, There's, again... Y'all should really listen to America's Workforce. It's a great podcast. Uh, they're on the radio just like we are, except in Ohio. And they have had a couple of interviews with Maximus workers, um, and, and they make actually less money than the people who qualify for the ACA that they're helping. So they're helping figure. They're helping people figure out how to navigate the ACA. Who make more money than they do, right? And so this is uh, this is uh, bonkers, and they should get more. And I'm glad you plugged that again, the America's Workforce Radio. That's a reminder for me to listen to that uh, because Hattiesburg holds a special place in my heart, being the home of the University of Southern Mississippi, where many of my family members attended and where I still root for the football team and have many fond memories uh, going to Hattiesburg, so it's always nice to see our brothers and sisters from the region, from our area, represent. So all of, all of my love and solidarity out there to the Maximus workers, wishing them much success in this campaign. Awesome, awesome. Uh, cops in Birmingham, Alabama, organized a blue flu with a sick out over low pay. Uh, curious, are, is there a lot of outrage in right-wing media about this? Because <laughs> as far as I know, they don't like workers When doing strike, sick outs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's funny. I actually, I actually, speaking of things that literal hours were spent on on the radio, um literal hours were spent on a sick out by teachers in Birmingham um, 
talking about how they don't care about their kids or, or they're just stuck up or, or whatever and, and they're hurting the community. Um, but, but yeah, that is funny. I hadn't even thought about that, Adam, how I have not heard anything about this. Uh, about how these cops are endangering their communities right. or how they don't care about the people that they are supposed to protect and serve. Yeah, I haven't heard any of that outrage. Interesting. That's weird. That is interesting. Hmm. Uh, anyway, employees at Disney in Florida have been staging intermittent walkouts to protest the company's initial silence on the anti-LGBTQ bill going through the state house that would prohibit teaching about sexual orientation, also known as the Don't Say Gay bill. This one is notable for being an explicitly political walkout, though it looks like at least Unite Here Local 362, one of the unions that represents Disney workers, along with several Teamsters locals and some others, they are telling their members not to participate. Um though it does seem to be due to potential discipline rather than political allegiance. And finally, in political fights, Dave Jameson reported on the long-term systemic underfunding of the NLRB and what it means for any current or future surge in new union organizing, not to mention investigating employer abuses. I would highly recommend reading that article. Uh, Joseph Webb, the president of the NLRB U Local 10, uh, mentioned that a couple of times. It was an article in the Huffington Post. Uh, y'all should check that out. It's a really good article about the funding cuts and what it what it's going to mean for working people as uh, as we organize into the future. So definitely check that out, folks. <clears throat> so uh, so yeah, if you want to see what happened in the rest of U.S. labor, you should read Jonah Furman's newsletter. Who gets the bird? Dot Substack. Dot com. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.com. 